Many bizarre things happen in life, but few are as shocking as what this woman's children experienced at her funeral. Their deceased mother, Julie, suddenly opened her eyes. From her teenage years, Julie dreamed of a fairy tale life. She envisioned finding her prince charming and living in a grand home with him and their children. Despite coming from an average background, she aspired to a life meant for royalty. For many, such dreams would seem far-fetched, but they came true for Julie when she met Kevin, a wealthy young man destined to take over his family's business. The two fell in love at first sight, and their beautiful love story was straight out of a movie. Within a year of dating, Kevin proposed to Julie, and they married two months later. They moved into a magnificent mansion that had everything Julie had ever wanted. Julie got pregnant soon after, and they were elated. In due time, the couple had a beautiful boy, and to them, life couldn't be more perfect. In the following years, they had two more boys. Kevin continued to grow the family business, and it was more successful than ever. He provided for his family, and they never lacked anything. The children went to the best schools, had all the best stories, and went on vacations frequently. Their lives seemed too good to be true, and as the saying goes, it was. A few years later, Kevin was in a car accident and died. This was a terrible blow to the family, and they were completely distraught. Julie, in particular, nearly lost her mind. She refused to come out of her room for weeks and survived only on water. Eventually, though, she summoned the strength to move on for the sake of her boys. Luckily for them, Kevin had bequeathed his entire possessions to his wife and sons, so they never had to lack anything. He gave control of the entire estate and business to his wife until the children turned 30. Julie tried her best to take care of the children and raise them the right way. She played not only the role of a mother, but also that of a father, best friend, and sister. It was a Herculean task and she was often overwhelmed. But despite all the training, love, and advice she gave, the boys were obstinate and difficult to control. They would do exactly what Julie warned them against. Julie made sure she gave them everything they needed, but they never appreciated it. When the boys came of age, they moved out of the house so they could have the privacy to do whatever they wanted. Despite their decision, Julie continued to provide for them, so they remained comfortable and never had to do much work. Julie would often complain about how they all left her, especially now that she was getting older and needed extra help. But Jason, the first son, would reply, we have our own lives to lead, and we cannot give it up because of you. You have lived your own life, so let us live ours. Years passed, and the boys hardly ever came to visit Julie. They only called when they needed something from her. Julie was sad and lonely. She couldn't understand why the son she cherished so much would treat her this way. With a constant worry about the boys, Julie aged faster and needed help around the house more than ever. Years prior, she had laid off the house help after Kevin's death because she wanted to take care of her children alone without any external influence. Now she was all alone again. She got a woman to come help from time to time around the house and to keep her company. Julie grew to love the lady and eventually asked if she would like to come in as a live in help, and she accepted. Her name was Rose, Rose took Julie as her mother and friend. She made sure she was always comfortable. She knew Julie had children, but had never seen them come around. She only spoke to them on the phone when they called to ask for money. Rose didn't understand why the boys acted the way they did because, so far, Julie was nothing but an amazing and sweet mother. One day, Julie gave Rose a scare when she had a heart attack. Rose rushed her to the hospital where she was stabilized. The doctors told Rose that this was one of the risk factors for her age, and it seemed like Julie had a lot on her mind, which Rose knew had to do with her children. While Julie was still unconscious, Rose decided to reach out to the children on the phone. She figured that if she told them their mother was sick, they would have a change of heart. Sadly, only the third son, Roger, picked up the call, and he had nothing good to say. When Rose told him about his mom's condition, he said in a high-pitched voice, Well, it seems you were smart enough to do the right thing by taking her to the hospital. I'm glad that she's now stable. Next time you call me, let it be for something actually urgent. With this, he hung up. Rose was shocked and didn't know how she would tell Julie that none of her children cared enough. After this incident, 
Julie began to come to terms with the fact that she might not live much longer, especially if her sons continued to act this way. So she started tidying up her affairs, which included calling her lawyer to draw up her will. A few months later, Rose called the boys again. Roger picked up and immediately flared up. Didn't I tell you not to disturb me again if the situation isn't grave? Rose replied, well, I don't know if this qualifies as grave enough, but your mom suffered a heart attack and she didn't make it. She will be buried soon, so I thought to let you know. Also, since your brothers wouldn't answer their phones, you should let them know too. With this, she got off the phone. Of course, Roger was devastated to learn that his mother had passed away, but he was unwilling to travel that far for the burial. But on second thought, he decided to make the trip because he knew Julie would leak him a fortune in her will. He informed his brothers about their mother's death, and they all agreed to go there so they could see her one last time and claim whatever she left for them. The day of the funeral came, and all the Henderson boys were in the same room with their mother for the first time in years. They were very surprised because they were the only ones in attendance. Rose explained that Julie wanted only her sons at her funeral. Looking into the coffin, they saw Julie dressed in a gorgeous black dress and a beautiful diamond necklace. Angrily, the second son said, why would you want to take these expensive pieces into the grave with her? The first son then said, since no one else is coming for the funeral, why are we wasting time? Let's get on with this and move on to the will reading part. No problem. We will do that as soon as each of you says goodbye to your mother, Rose replied. The trio grumbled, but decided to get on with it. Starting with Jason, Roger approached the coffin, and what happened next blew everyone away. Roger believed it had to be jet lag, because what he was seeing couldn't be true, but he could swear he saw his mother's eyes move. He moved closer, and alas, her eyes were open. He immediately shouted for his brothers to come closer, and they were all shocked. This shock transformed into anger, and they all started shouting, why would you pull such a stunt for attention? What did you hope to gain from this? As they continued shouting, Julie finally answered with a scream, will you all shut up? Do you know how sad it is that the only thing that could bring my sons to me after these years is my funeral, and you weren't even here for me but for my money? Where did I go wrong with you boys? I tried my best to take care of you, but despite that, all I have received is spite and hatred. Her outburst brought the boys to their senses, and they began to realize the truth in her words. They saw how unjustifiably self-centered they had been, letting their privileges blind them to the most important things in life kindness, love, and humility. They apologized to their mother and promised to do better. The boys stayed a few extra days with their mother and visited her regularly. Julie couldn't have been happier, cherishing the newfound love and attention from her sons. Five years later, she passed away peacefully in her sleep, her heart content and happy. She left part of her possessions to her loving and ever trustworthy caretaker, Rose, who stayed with her until the end and the rest of her children to be shared equally among them. Rose's children visit her grave regularly to leave flowers. They eventually learn the true value of love and selflessness. I'm really keen to know your thoughts on this story, so please don't hesitate to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it engaging, I invite you to subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Feel free to share this video, take good care of yourselves, and I'm excited to connect with you in our future videos.